church school to a high research facility, Jackson State University is a testament to courage, vision, and leadership. On Thursday, October 23rd, the university held its 137th Founders Day Convocation. Alumnus Michael Barksdale Jr. and student Devin Stepney had this to say on the event. What I learned today about Founders Day is that 137 years ago a milestone was made. And that milestone has transpired to 137 years later of excellence from our alma mater, the Jackson State University. Today's ceremony for Founders Day, it pretty much just brought all of us together because we, like the, um, uh, the other young man said, we have come from a milestone of oppression and it's, we're all reaping the benefits. The program picked up with Jackson State's very own Sonic Women of the South leading the procession with King Cotton. When the posting of the colors were presented by the Tiger Battalion, Reverend Dennis Williams gave the invocation and Miss Jackson State University and Issa Butler greeted the audience. This university was founded in a time where the African American community was not thought of when it came to education. Now, today, this university continues to thrive as it serves and educates students from all over the world. This is a celebration of the Jackson State University. Thank you. When introductions were over, Professor Rico Chapman introduced the speaker, freedom writer Hank Thomas, who shared that with great life struggles comes greater rewards. Of the original seven freedom riders who were on that bus that was attacked, I am the only one still alive. I have, a, thank you. I have attended far too many funerals, and I've raised my glasses to their memories. But memories are all that I have left of them now. And memories, they don't leave like people do. They always stay with you. And it is in the evening of my memories. When Thomas finished, his words led the choir into song with the Battle of Jericho. <laughs> Professor Patricia Kennedy gave announcements and Reverend Williams returned for the benediction. The band concluded the program with Stars and Stripes. <laughs> with the ceremony over, professors, students, and alumni were eager to express their views about the speaker. I thought the speaker was marvelous. I have been in higher ed for 25 years, so I have been to numerous Founders Day um, programs, and I thought this was absolutely the best. I thought he was motivational, he was historic, he gave us something to think about, but it was absolutely stunning. The 137, I think, was one of the best ones we had, because in addition to his speech, he gave a history lesson, and it was also motivational because really what he was talking about going on the Freedom Trail, getting on the bus at 18 years old can resonate with our students. It's all about courage. This was a profile in courage. An 18 year old person got on the bus, went south, knew that there were going to be, was going to be problems, but instead had the courage enough and the tenacity enough to go and do what was necessary. And there's a lesson there for all of us. We have to have that level of courage right now and that level of tenacity to ensure that Jackson State's around for another 200 years. Reception was held at the JSU Ballroom and there Professor Sunny Fritz shared her thoughts on the event. Founders Day is a celebration of where we've come from, where we're going, where we are, and just about dreams. And it was such a wonderful day today. Our guest speaker, Mr. Hank Thomas,
1961 Freedom Rider. So emotional, inspiring, and it makes me want to do even better, be some type of change while I'm here at Jackson State University as an educator. As the reception concluded, Speaker Hank Thomas signed autographs and offered more insight and wisdom. Only 10% of Jackson's black population could be called anywhere middle class in terms of income. So you've had that expansion of the black middle class all over the country. And that's come about because education, the number of blacks who have now have college degrees in terms of the percentage of the population is tremendous as compared to what it was 50 years ago. And with the equal rights uh, uh, employment laws and that have been passed and of course equal housing, all of these have led to the creation of a black middle class. Today, uh, some people find it hard to believe that only about 24% of all black households live at or below the poverty line. Only 24%. With the tradition established and spirits renewed, many look forward to next year's 138th convocation.